Welcome back to the University of Queensland School of Architecture series of introductory videos for Rhino and Grasshopper. Now we're going to come back to our example tower and continue building our routine. Now in this next short series of, of videos we're going to divide up or optimize the number of um, cross laminated timber panels we will use for each floor plate and then figure out where the beams may go to help join the CLT together and as a consequence of that where the columns, the internal columns may go. In determining how the CLT will be oriented on this floor plate there's probably, you know, you could do it either way, you could orientate it the long direction going east to west or west to east as I'm drawing it or along the short edge from north to south. I'm going to set up the panel so that the long edge of the panel does go from from north to south and we have then a series of short edges along here and the reason is mainly attributed to this curve facade and in particular the way that this curve changes from a curve that bulges out at the top and progressively goes to a bulge in that is symmetrical at some point from one floor to the next. Now the logic of this can be seen I guess if we uh, cut a typical CLT panel because the CLT is manufactured using CNC technology. The machine doesn't really care where it cuts the panels and in what configuration it cuts it so it can cut a curve, a straight, a diagonal and it can keep actually cutting it at different increments. And it's all about the data going into the process. If we cut the panels along the short edge then when the panels split we can then flip the panel to get two panels and as you can see towards the top of the building where we have the curve going out then the curve here goes out and towards the bottom where the curve is going in then the flip side of that panel the curves going in so the one panel can be used in two different parts of the building so that is how I've come to the decision to orientate the panels to go that way now the other thing is that it depends on how you set up the floor plates and how you set up the logic of the parametric routine now in a previous set of videos um, we showed how you could set up a floor plate based on a fixed unit or a fixed size of CLT panel and the dimension of the floor plate adjusted corresponding to the dimension and quantity of that fixed floor plate size. Well in this instance we're going to sort of work somewhere between that because we've got a parametric routine that sort of defines the edge but we don't want the uh, panel size necessarily to drive it because we want to be able to optimize between what we design as the ideal envelope and we'll get the CLT panels to adjust to that ideal envelope based on a starting set of parameters that we will input in for our CLT. I'll start by pulling up a few number sliders here. So I'll start off with a reasonable size through here and the first one we're going to call our uh, CLT panel length. And According to um, XLAM, the longest um, panels I think is around 14, let's say 15 metres long. So that will be the constraints of our number slider there. The other dimension that XLAM quote on their website is the CLT width. So we'll pull up another slider here. We'll go CLT width and for the width, the maximum width was 3.4 meters. So that gives us, I guess, a, a set of starting parameters for our panels. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to base, uh, we'll start off first with the CLT length. We'll, we'll dial it up to a, a more reasonable size around sort of seven, seven and a half meters. With the panels going this way, we're going to then have a series of panels, probably one, two, maybe three. But we need to, uh, I guess, tune the total number of panels going this way to the widest point of our building, which will be, the, I guess, the point where it's bulging out 
mostly out that way because then the middle dimension will be the greater dimension. And so that's going to establish the starting parameter for our optimization of the CLT panels. So to get that dimension, what I'm going to do is that I'll put in an addition and that is going to be based on the overall width of our building. So we'll pull that down through here and also the maximum curvature of the building. So that's going to be the length through there. So now in order to get an approximation of, of how many panels then what we'll have to simply do is divide the, the maximum length with our desired CLT length. So that's just a, a simple division. So we'll get the uh, maximum length through here. We'll divide that into our CLT length through there. Now the result we're going to get if we just pull up a panel is going to be 3.5998393 but that, that's not going to be helpful for us because if we want to know how many times to divide it we can't have a, a floating integer we need a whole number so what we'll do is that we'll round that number and we can do that there is a rounding function if we type in round we'll, oops pop that in there and now you can see it will give us the rounded value but this rounding function will also give us the smallest value and also the biggest value but in this instance we're going to go for the rounded value okay so in order to sort of close the optimization then we come back and we'll do another division so don't forget that this is our maximum width of our building and we'll divide that by a whole number. So it's a bit of a circuit. So we start off with uh, a number that we ideally want to aim for and which in this case is just a bit over 7.5 meters. But once we've rounded it, the actual figure or the length of that panel is going to be 6.7 uh, meters long. So that means that we can work with a, uh, a whole number of panels. Okay, now to make this next step a bit clearer, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off our extrude and we'll turn on our edge surfaces. Now, what I'm going to do here is to make this a bit clearer what I'm going to do because I'll be setting up some information down the on the ground floor. I'm going to turn the geometry off for the extrude, for the surface and I'll turn on these um, these generating lines for the each of the floor plates. Okay, so we'll go ahead back down here. So what I'm going to do now is, based on these numbers that I've got here, I'm going to set up a, a series of lines through here so that that will define the edge of our CLT panel going that way. So to do that, I'm just going to pull up a number series. Okay, the step value is going to be this length of the CLT that we've established and the count will be the number that's coming out of our rounding factor through here. So we'll then going to move, move, this line according to, so we're going to go in the negative x direction, so we need a, a unit x, but we also need a negative in there. So I'll put the move, the negative, and we'll move, give ourselves a bit of space here. So we'll go, um, duh, 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 duh. so we'll go uh, x units, negative value, translate and the geometry that we're going to move is this one here but because we've created this as a series I'm going to have to actually create a new line because I only want the one line I don't want to duplicate the whole lot because I just want to set up a grid so I'm going to have to find the uh, south 
south uh, west corner. Try and get that with my trying to be a bit dexterous with my mouse and scroll. So that's one corner, and then we want the uh, southwest. So that's the southwest and uh, southwest, and then the southeast corner. Uh, which will go through there. We'll pop that into there and we'll have then a series of generating lines. So this would be the our length of our CLT. And along here we're going to set up some columns. So I'll do is I'll leave it there and we'll pick it up again um, in the next video. Thanks.